As of February 19th, the coronavirus has now infected more than 75,000 people worldwide, with most of those cases in China, where the virus originated from. CNN has reported that the death toll is approaching 2,000 people, mostly in China. There are currently 29 cases in the United States, with 14 infected Americans coming from the quarantined Diamond Princess cruise ship. Amid these fears, the flu season is still underway here in the United States, and according to our next guest, a bigger concern for people locally. Carolee McGrath sat down with Dr. Sarah Hessler, a Bay State Health epidemiologist and infectious disease specialist, to learn more. It's a virus that um, emerged from an animal to a human um, and then was uh, capable of then spreading from human to human. So that's what's different about it and why it spreads so quickly is because humans don't have any immunity to this kind of virus. So lots of us have uh, immunity to other viruses because we've gotten them before. So you think about, uh, for example, um, chicken pox, right? So that's a virus. We, many of us have had chicken pox in our life, and then once we've had it, we have immunity to it so we don't get it again. So it stops spreading like wildfire. But when a virus emerges out of an animal um, host, where it's normally just circulating in the animals, it doesn't infect humans, but if it's able to jump out of the species, then we've never seen it before, and that's why it, it spreads so fast. And what are the symptoms? So the symptoms are very, uh, from what we know, again, um, much of the information is coming out of China because this is really an epidemic that is predominantly occurring in China and predominantly occurring in one area of China. But from what we know from the, the early reports coming out of there is very similar to influenza. So cold, cold symptoms, body aches, fevers, and then uh, the people that are getting the severe disease are having some pneumonia symptoms. So shortness of breath, deep cough, and some changes on their chest x-ray. And is that what causes um, the deaths that have been reported? What is causing the mortality? As far as we understand, again, this, these are this very early information and coming out of another country, so there's translation that's occurring. But our understanding is that most of the people that are dying are having a syndrome called um, ARDS, or acute respiratory distress syndrome. And that that is a um, process that can occur in some people who have either pneumonia or a viral pneumonia like influenza, or sometimes it, it doesn't even occur due to uh, infection. Some people with bad, for example, COPD or emphysema flares will get ARDS. And that is um, a pattern where the lung um, air cells in the lung that exchange air, they fill up with fluid and inflammatory cells and it makes it very hard for the person to get oxygen into the bloodstream and to uh, release carbon dioxide, which is the whole job of the lungs. And so they're, they're sort of filled with fluid and difficult for the people to breathe and get enough oxygen. They end up on ventilators and sometimes they, even with that support, they don't survive. They can't survive. Tell me a little bit about how it's um, transmitted person to person. Well, so that is something that is still being um, investigated. Uh, it's, I think, too early to, to really know. What we understand so far is that it's probably something called droplet spread, which is the way that influenza is spread, is which is sneezing, coughing, um, uh, breathing uh, heavy wet droplets when I cough if I have the disease I cough if you're within three to six feet or so of me these wet kind of droplets they come out they spray toward another person and they can get on the mucous membrane so the eyes the nose the mouth of the person that's susceptible and within range and uh, then they get the virus themselves. Now, um, the early reports are th that have been coming out of China are saying it's a droplet spread similar to influenza, infecting people within three to six feet or so, and something that can be contained by wearing um, personal protective equipment. There is some question still about whether um, it possibly could be an airborne spread the way TB or varicella are. Um, and uh, or could there be some people who are what they refer to as super spreaders, mm -hmm. right? So normally if I have influenza, I'm going to on average infect about one, two, three or so people who are susceptible that come in contact with me. That's 
the average. Whereas um, with this coronavirus, again, the average they think is probably two or three people, but there may be some super spreaders that are spreading it to 10, 12, 15, 20 people. And so what's different about them? Is it that they're spreading it through the airborne route or is it that there's something unique about them that they have more virus in them? These are, things, these are questions that it's way too early for us to be able to, to understand fully. The bigger threat hearing from you is the flu in the United States and we're yes. right in the middle of that season. Absolutely. also causes thousands of deaths yes. uh, per year. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for raising that. And that's really the take home point that I want everybody, uh, you know, all of our listeners and all of the people that use Bay State Health uh, and all the people in our community to understand right now in terms of the absolute risk to our population right now is absolutely due to influenza. We are in the height of influenza season right now. There has been over um, 200 million cases of influenza in the United States already this year. This year! And, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of people being hospitalized with it, and we've had on the order of about 20,000 deaths in the United States from influenza. It's real, it's happening. And so I, I want to point out that the flu vaccine, while it's not perfect and you know lots of people complain about it, it's our best protection because it provides a larger sense of, of um, immunity within the communities. Does it help and you get over it faster if you still get it? So yes, and there's some evidence that if you have gotten the influenza vaccine, that if you get flu, you might have a less severe case of flu, or you might not get it at all if you're exposed to someone with the um, with the virus. And so it's not too late to get the vaccination. Um, you know, we still have some. Lots of the pharmacies in the area um, still have them. Clinics, your primary care provider still has them. And then, really basic things actually about personal protection, these basic things do work to protect you from influenza. So I will review them here, okay? The number one thing, wash your hands. <laughs> it's so important. But if you think about the number of times that you touch your eyes, your nose, or in your mouth in a day, you know, if you, if you were just to simply spend 15 minutes or 30 minutes counting the number of times you do this to yourself, you'll understand how easy it is to pick up virus that if you sneezed, you left it on this um, chair edge. I picked it up and touched my eye. I've just given it to myself. But if I had cleaned my hands in between that, I wouldn't necessarily pick it up. And you know, if you're feeling sick, be nice to your community, your coworkers, your family. Do not socialize, just keep your distance, don't shake hands. Um, and then presenteeism is an idea where we used to say, oh, we don't want absenteeism at work. You know, you, people are missing too much work. This is the opposite of that. If you are sick with flu-like symptoms, stay home from work. Don't bring it into your workplace and infect all of your coworkers who are then going to bring it home to their family and their friends. And some of them may have people that are very um, vulnerable medically. You know, they may have immune compromise. They may be elderly. They may have underlying cardiac or pulmonary disease that um, then makes them more vulnerable to getting severe disease.